Well, hello there, folks. I am here at Mantic HQ with the Grand Wizard himself, Mr. Ronnie Renton. They've been showing us some of their products here. We might show you a bit of B-roll footage during the interview. But we thought we'd have a little bit of a chat about you and your history yep. in gaming, then Mantic, and then some of your newer products, if that's all right. My pleasure. So tell Thank us, you. Ronnie, where, where did it all begin? Yeah, way, way it, it was a CPU world. Diddly, 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 diddly. Exactly, black exactly. and white. Well, it was black and white, because the first Warhammer edition mm. was a black and white game, wasn't it? Right. Uh, the first bit of colour was on fantasy, Forces of Fantasy. So um, I was into, I mean, I was always into plastic soldiers from ever as a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember once I got, my mother came storming up the stairs on a Saturday night, and I decorated my my whole room she said what the hell's going on here and i said well these are mountain troops <laughs> parachuted they've landed over there and this is the city i've built so apparently i misunderstood the question um yeah, yeah. but and so from then there was always just toys tanks guns that mm -hmm. kind of vibe war like games. etsy and airfix earlier yeah 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 absolutely that and then the war games club was a senior school club but we fa I found out about it when I was in the junior school and I badgered the teacher sufficiently enough yep. that he let us come along. So four of us went along and had, it was like once every two terms or something like that. So we had a couple of those 172nd uh, Airfix Napoleonics. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, glued onto little bases, so that's probably where my paint, regiment base. <laughs> paint peels off when the figures bend. Yeah, and I painted oh, with gloss paint. You oh, know, beautiful. Because the, uh, there wasn't even a model shop around, so it was a... A toy and hobby shop. I forget. There were great black and yellow stores. There was one in Stockport, and they were. Um, and, and I went downstairs. And I got black for the hats, and and you know brown mm -hmm. for the guns. And I picked up all the gloss colours. So yeah. there we are. Anyway, but it was great fun. From there, started discovering fantasy. Started discovering D and D role playing. And there was a small company called Citadel Miniatures that was doing some metal minis. And um, there were you know little single figures in blister packs and mm -hmm. uh, started picking those up and the rest as they say is uh, is history. history now like most people we're here in nottingham in in the lead belt all the lead of the belt. all of the big companies are here right yeah this is where all this the is talent is. is right yeah, this this is is where is the, the silicon valley of uh, war gaming yeah the that. the lead belt as it were um but you did you did work at, at Games Workshop for oh, a yeah, little yeah, while, yeah, didn't yeah, you? No, I loved it. So I joined. I mean, I, I like I said, I had a pre-order for Warhammer before it existed, and right. then um, there was no way you could buy uh, Games Workshop stuff in right. our area. The Manchester store was the closest, but that was uh, an hour on the bus, mm. and you just weren't allowed to go into Manchester when you were kids. So I phoned up John Stallard, who was doing trade at the time, and I right. said, "Listen, I need to, um, I need, I need to, I need to buy some of this stuff off you for." For selling it was a Tim Wilson John Style Art, and mm. they said you need to spend three hundred pounds. Three hundred pounds, and this is in the eighties. This is in the eighties, and I said I have spent three hundred pounds. You went half of that, right? Yeah, correct, it was that. Anyway, I went to London. They said three, no, in one go. So I went to my dad and I said I need to borrow three hundred quid, and he said, well, I need a business plan, son. And I think he right. thought this was a lesson in life. Is that yes. Okay? And I said to him, uh, I said, okay, well, I'm going to borrow the money off you. I'm going to sell the miniatures, and I'm going to give you your money back. And he went, well, it's not quite the sophisticated business plan I wanted, yeah, yeah. but he kind of lends it to me, I think, thinking it was going to be a Christmas present and a life lesson because he was mm. a, you know, a good car dealer. And everything. Anyway, I borrowed the money on the Thursday. All the mates came over the weekend. I knew all what they wanted. They all bought it off and I gave him back his money on the Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> so, right, okay. Uh, it was a, so from then on, of course, I knew that Stallard and Tim Wilson, the guys... And those are, connections. So I kind of did my GCSE project up at... Uh, Warhammer, you know, where it, where, as oh, it was. Oh, right, like shifted. a full-on fanboy then. Yeah, right? oh yeah, absolutely. Worked before, between leaving school and uni, I got a job there. I didn't think I was going to get my A-levels, so I thought that was it. I was up working. Right. Got my A-levels, mother dragged me up to university. While at uni, I worked in the Leeds store. So I'd been kind of working all along when it came to getting a job. They'd just mm. done the transaction and uh, Brian, God, God rest his soul, had, had sold off. And Chris and uh, Tom had, had, you know, taken over with the, the VC money. So got a job. And it was the start, really, I think, of, of workshop. I think being the workshop, the, silly, I, I, the second phase, the first phase, I think, was up at that almost the same size as Mantic is now. I mean, you know, and certainly yeah. the Warlord Mantic size companies. The second phase was when it went from there, it started opening international offices, it started growing the UK retail chain significantly. Mm -hmm. um, started getting managers rather than hobbyists in. Well, yeah, and there were, but I, there was 10 years, it was a hell of a lot of fun. 
You know, yeah. we opened in France, we opened in Spain, I opened Germany, I opened all the te first 10 stores in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, did the trade sales, we had Glaisdale, great times, good fun, kind of talented amateurs having a, a good run at it, but mm. it was attracting people where you could say to your mum, look, I'm going to go and work for Games Workshop, and it was floated, so they're like, well, I suppose it's a real job, you know, and the store managers, it was a real job, it was, mm -hmm. uh, they could read about it, so... It was the, that was that, and then it started in the mid 2000s to just start getting that manager, that corporate level. The, the share price was the most important thing, and yeah. managing for the city and so on and so forth. And I thought, right, well, I think there's there's fun to be had here, and I'm not sure what this is doing is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Right. Yeah. And so that's when I said, you know, they'd just done Lord of the Rings and we said, we're never ever doing another license again. We're never doing it. Licenses don't work. And I said, I think licenses don't work if you've got, you know, independent shareholders and 300 stores and mm. you've got a forecast your sales. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work. But I think we could have some real cracking fun with some licenses and, you know, lo and behold, Walking Dead and Hellboy and soon to be Halo. So you left workshop and immediately started Mantic? Had about six months, thought about a few things I could do and some of them were quite sporting. If you get me drunk, I'll tell you about them. Right, um, right. But I had this a is year. when you bought the jet ski and went to oh, Vegas. Yeah, and... something like. Um, or like a low budget version of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. and, um, and then I thought, if I don't set my own business up, I'll, let, I'll forever what if. And mm. I think there is a real opportunity to do something that that reconnects with a small business and the gaming community. And mm. I think it's coming at it in a slightly different way. You know, we yeah, we obviously start in the same place, Elves, Dwarfs, Tabletop Game D6. Mm. But, you know, I think now, 10 years, 15 years on, the difference from where we, what we're trying to create here, the kind mm. of revolution we're trying to have, uh, they're just a bit more relaxed, a bit more friendly, a bit more, you know, uh, owner-occupied gaming company that can genuinely be in touch with fans and pick up cool things and do things that you can't do when you're a monolithic, Four billion pound company, and, and, you, and got to turn over that four billion pound. Got to, and got to do a bit. More. Correct, and yeah. we don't need to do that. I know we'll have years where you know our Halo, a Hellboy year was the biggest year we had. You did I you knew it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and then it's going to flatten off, and then we're going to go again. Now, I, I certainly intend mm. to grow, and a good business yeah. equals a good hobby because you can spend money on tooling and, yeah. and having fun and videos and cool stuff. But I don't need to do it now in this way. I don't have and that. And your only principal shareholder is Mrs. Renton, presumably. <laughs> That's the one person we all need to keep happy. If you want toys, is Mrs. Renton needs to stay happy. Yeah, uh, okay. And I owe her, so uh, 15 years. So, and you started, like, really quite small. You had a couple of sprues, some skeletons and some dwarves. I've got a really old... I say really old. I mean, Mantic's not old, but a little box game called Dwarf Fortress or something that yeah, I had okay, with the kids. Yeah, so Dwarf Keys Quest, probably. That was where we and talked about hand, plastic sprues. And dwarf sprues and yeah, a skeleton and sprue. Yeah, and card. Yeah, we just didn't have... So we had these plastic sprues that were very expensive and we were trying different ways of, to push of them using out. them. Yeah. And, and you know, Jake was around at the time. And I said, well, listen, here's the rules. Here's our sprue set. Yeah. You can make any game as long as you use what's on a yeah, sprue. Yeah, this is what we've got. And we then went on and did it again with uh, Project Pandora. And interestingly, that was probably when we started really taking the games part seriously. The mm. only bit being, you know, that we're almost probably best known now, and that we're making the best games, the actual playability of the games, is the thing that ran in, the first thing that people go, oh my God, I've never played a game like that. And now the stable of Mantic Games is quite significant. Not only you've released a lot of Plastic Sprue yeah. over the past few years yeah. um, and seem to be really scaling that up over time. Um, it's worth mentioning there was a time you experienced with, you experimented a bit with another material. It yeah, kind of resty we called it. It was, like a, it was a PVC, but it was a harder PVC, which was supposed to give us the better detail. But it didn't handle the plastic glue yeah. so well, did it? No, and it did mold lines. It worked for, I mean, the, the ogres, I think, dropped out last year, and they were pretty good models. They had a good yeah. character, and they worked all right, but we changed them into hard plastic, and hard plastic's just better, you know. It's, it's kind of what the market wants, isn't yeah. it? Whereas you can't make everything in hard plastic. And and that's why you have your what? resins and we're phasing out the metal, you know, so even yeah. though it's lead belt, you know, we are at the tail end of the metal mm -hmm. phasing and you know, metal was great for uh, arms and heads for a regiment that you've got a plastic sprue on and it just needs a spear instead of a sword. Right. Because you can put a sprue with a load of swords on it that's a little mm -hmm. bit bending on you go. That's, that's tough in resin because it's it? a lot more brittle. Right. The quality in resin is far higher. 
but it's hand cast. The volume's there. You literally peel it out right. the mold model at a time. Yeah, I mean, I've have seen the process. It's it's surprisingly kind of artisan, isn't it? Is it, it is it's it? a very cottage industry for uh, what yeah. is now a global industry. So, yeah, and some people using CO cast. We actually just have the hard plastic in the level we like it at, and then resin commanders, one off to supplement models, the range, right. and and those ones you want the quality. Above yeah. all else. All right. So um, the big news and the reason we got in touch with you is yeah. you've got a big new product. I mean, by the time big, you small, see small, a big, big small new, product, small, big by the time epic. you see this video, it yeah. will be on Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, I, I I got in touch with Ronnie at the weekend and he replied because I want to talk about Epic Warpath. Yep. This is your sort of 8 to 12 mil-ish yep. scale and it is your sci-fi IP yep. moved up to those bigger scale battles. Yep. Big Kickstarter. We've had a look at it. I've got to say, um, the the game itself is interesting. It definitely um, that you can see some aspects of some of your other games, like the D eight. Yeah. Uh, you do seem to like a D eight over at Manzik. I mean, the philosophy of the D8, particularly on the sci fi, is it gives you a whole load of what would normally have to be baked in as either weapon upgrades or toughness, or because you know on a D six your sweet spot is you know never one. Never six, you know, yeah. so you got two, three, four, five. Yeah. Two means you're almost certainly going to do it. Five means you're never going to do it or yeah. vice versa. What this means is you can have a real range of yeah. a tough weapon, but a not, not a tough survive or, or yeah. vice versa. You've got, you got much more granularity. Correct. Absolutely. And, and just, you don't get pushed off the table quickly because plus two modifier means you never fail or whatever. No. Correct, yeah. I, and, I, and you don't need the modifiers often because no. it's baked into the stat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is a heavy absolutely. Day. So we, we kind of do, particularly for sci-fi, we love it. We think like it just the, gives you a whole lot of easy, pick them up, roll them, dum dum mm -hmm. dum dum dum, and once you've got it, that mechanic that we're all used to is yeah. is there. So this game, it's a big game. I mean, we yep. looked at those Kickstarters. Is that, I don't know, something like 150 figures per army. Yeah, kind of minimum. I think it, you know, yeah. it's like 150 yeah, plus in yeah. your basic 35 pound. Yeah, and you get in. Set. Sort of medium tanks, light and heavy infantry types, some APCs, maybe even a couple of flyers in the stretch goals. There's some silhouettes on the stretch goals, but you don't have to think too hard about what they yeah, actually you know they are, are. going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what we used to had a quick look behind the scenes is this is this is a product that's in active development. Yeah. You have a plan. Yeah. But it is not all done yet. Yeah. That is the yep. nature of, of Kickstarter is, you know, whether you'll do four, five, six, seven, eight armies. Yeah, that, that's... No, it's, it's down to how... So when we first... I came to Matt last year, end of the year before 2022, we'd talk about 2023, and I said, let's do the sci-fi big battle game. Mm -hmm. Dead Zone's in a great place, had launched earlier, but launched that time the year before. <coughs> Beautiful eight-figure skirmish interacted with the terrain. I think you've just played it. Yeah, we're going yeah. we'll to... We just that. had a game, we'll talk yeah. about in a minute. And then we had Warpath. And when we first did the Kickstarter, Warpath was supposed to be a 28 mil squad based and a 28 mil big battle game, but all at that scale. In the universe, slick, fast, quick, like Kings of War. Very intuitive. Um, and it was supposed to be you take your dead zone figures, <laughs> there's one squad. Yeah. Add a few more, there's two squads. Take your buildings, put them on the gaming table, you're halfway yeah. to the game. Yeah. So when the, the hobby side of it is quite well scaffolded there. You can start with a skirmish game and it's all it's right. totally compatible with the big game. When we first launched the Warpath game and we wrote it Firefight, which was the next step up, was not. It was written differently. Yes, it was D8, but right. the core mechanics were different. They kind of went off piste. And then it came back a little bit with Warpath. So we put them on bases at 28 mil, so we were taking you know, five men usage off. But again, it wasn't a linear process. Intellectually it was, but the development process kind of took it off skew. So we had this lovely plastic range, really nice models, but not a rule set that felt intuitively like you were scaling up. Right. So then actually the RC from Dead Zone said, we we want to play, we want to do this, and we see what you want to do. A clever group, group of guys, Passion of Rob and, and Andy, and they did it, and they really nailed it. Mm -hmm. Um, because they were the rules committee, they didn't rules committee it. So then it came out with a couple of things that just needed polishing. But at the end of last year, we did containment protocols. And if you've never played it, I suggest you try it. But what we suddenly had was our 28 mil skirmish game, a 28 mil squad uh, regiment battle game that yep. took you. And then last year, what we did is we added, you don't want three tanks, you want 12 tanks. Right. You want 12 vehicles, you want anti-tank vehicles, and we've added that as a layer. So it's really moved in a way from being a 
you know, a kind of 40k game, which is from five or six units and a couple of vehicles to 50% armor, 50% infantry. So you don't need more infantry, you just need more armor. And right. you change the, the, the scenarios and you change it. So here it is in a great space. Here's this world. It's lovely, it's slick, and it's big. And that's the existing warpath. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's, no, the no, that's the existing firefight. It's called Firefight. Firefight. Yeah. And uh, that is sat there, it's called Firefight, and we're gonna have a big splurge this summer. We've got a new Dead Zone faction, we've got new hard plastics coming for it, for Hysterians. Mm. And we're gonna do a big drive on that. That's gonna take years, but it's getting its fans, it's getting its competitive play. Mm -hmm. It's got its own unique style, it's very intuitive, very quick, very fast. And then we looked and the original plan was Warpath was gonna be the big version of that, and we went, let's not do it at 12, let's not do it at 28, 32 mil, let's do it at the scale. It let's do it at the scale that it requires to have 20 tanks on the table. 40 tanks and, and big heavies and all that cool stuff that you'll never be yeah. able to do at 28. So, Epic Warpath is scaling that up. Now, we, again, we're sending the, the Kickstarters. You're talking like 20, 30 bases of infantry with APCs, with tanks, yeah. all in. Um, this is all on hard plastic frame, this basic army, yeah. which is gonna, which is plenty of stuff for a 6x4 table. Yeah. You've gone down an interesting route with the, with the next stage to kind of bolt on to the army, which is that you you will cast them in resin for yeah. people that want them, but you're you're offering them as STLs as well. Yeah, you can have it's, an either or. Is it? Yeah, you can either print them yourself and then you can print as many as you want. Yeah, or some people do that. Some dark and twisted souls. Yeah, um, yeah. and then uh, the, the rest of us say, you know what? Put it in a box and send it to me. Right, right. And we've got this beautiful. We've got a great resin facility. The quality is superb. We've been using it for Armada, you know, in lockdown. That went mm -hmm. crazy. So we're able to cope with the volume. And the whole idea is. And, and part of, you know, when we knew the other one was coming and I, we were halfway through development, we were like, if we, if we tool this and it doesn't sell, we're in big trouble. So I went out to, the, to, the, to our fan base and said, guys, let me know what you think. Is this something you'd like to see us do? Because mm. if, if we do it, you have to support us and have to buy it. Cause, <laughs> well, yeah, because we're going to spend a lot of money on tooling mm. it because you can't do it in resin. You know, mm. with Armada, you only need eight, eight boats. And right. Beautiful, but they're big. You know, each one of them's like a yeah, it's big, a big old lump of resin, piece. right? Yeah, and it looks fantastic. And you've got broadsides, and each one's doing lots of different things. Mm. You know, with this, you need 150 figures, and the only right. way you can do that is plastic. Yeah. So we've sculpted all four, and we've committed to all four of the plastics. You know, as long as we fund, but you know, literally all the first money yeah. is the zone money. Within that, you've got enough to play more than enough to play but we know that people want to start adding play styles there's other vehicles that you just can't get on the sprue so we've done those but we've done those as a little add-on reinforcements pack as mm -hmm. you said either stls or in resin and then who doesn't want a super heavy so yeah. these are all different kind of like troop transporters and flyers in and massive unload yeah. things who play very differently that's how you comprise each army and these, these super heavies how big are we talking because your apc is like an inch or two long right but yeah, the super heavies like, you're talking about a three inch block yeah like it's a, a full it's retailer 25 30 quid model Right, and this is yeah. these are for like your super heavy tanks. And... Yeah, and if you were playing a massive all day Sunday battle with all your mates, you'd have three of those. The Kickstarter's out there, you can see loads of this stuff. We had a quick look at the game, it's quite interesting. Um, we also saw that some of the price point, they talk about price point, I think is really important for some people. It looks very competitively priced to, shall we say, similar scale <laughs> science fiction games. Well, yeah, and the way we've tooled it is that, you know, we don't we don't have this endless tale of, of, of like, buy, get you in cheap, the first hit's free, and mm. away you go. We want to say, look, here it is, this is how we've tooled Trip. it. You know, we want people playing, we want as many people playing this game as possible. Our method is not taking a lot of people off, of, a lot of money off a few people, it's taking a little bit off a lot of people. Yeah. And, and our growth is now, you know, I've always said the hardest Mantic product to buy is the first one. Yeah. Because you've just got to give it a try. It's a leap of faith. You know, we're yeah. going to be different. But increasingly, people are doing that leap of faith. They're going to go on and play me dead zone, play me this one. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This was a different experience. You won't argue about the rules. You will be enjoying the models. It's a different game experience. And that's that's where we're creating our own space. And the space. You, my idea is you agree to play with your mate or someone you kind of like, you turn up, you set it up, you roll your dice while having a beer. And the right. enjoyment and social aspects of gaming, preparing, and even if, you, if you've enjoyed it, if you've played three or four turns and it's been good back and forth and then you can blame the dice for losing, mm. when you go away you think next week I'm going to come back, you know what, I need a little bit more firepower. I'm just going to need a couple of models that's just going to 
just nudge me up in that area and just and then you come back and do it again and then you win it and he's going away thinking about that and i think there's that whole fun back and forth you often play the same guys in the same game so being able to tweak it and change it but enjoy it yeah rather than it being a sometimes it can be quite a frustrating experience with with the type of games that you can play if you get the wrong army in the wrong setting it's a demoralizing experience yeah and we've, when the we've price, made that almost minimum as someone who works with kids when the price of the models is high yeah if you've made some off meta choices with your early investment in a product yeah that can be soul destroying because you can't overcome that hump you if the other guy the you play and with and if is, you've taken your model off you know it's kind of like i've lost you know i've lost a limb type thing yeah, absolutely. getting it down and playing it so with things that are important the speed you play at you know yeah. if it's a four hour game versus a two hour game yeah. your personal investment is much lower yes if you can you can you can buy enough soldiers that you can have tactical choice yeah. you know i'm going to have three thousand points with everything of stuff. every game correct i've got three thousand points of stuff it cost me a hundred quid to get the whole lot mm. i'm going to play with fifteen hundred of it Right, yeah. I want more cannons, I want more this, yeah. you get that. Yeah. If the game dynamic is fun, so a lot of our games are I go, you go, I go, you go, particularly mm. the side Alternating stuff. activation stuff. Correct. Keeping it because nice it means you're not out of the game for a long time. And also, mm. yes, he's going to whack my tough thing, but then I'm going to whack his tough thing. Yeah. Whereas if you get it wrong in other games, you don't get a go. No, indeed. You know, indeed. tabling that is... is very, you know, I'll tell you, you won't be tabled in Kings of War, you won't be tabled in these games until round three or four, in which case... They've done a number on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have very a chance but to you find that. But you were playing like, up until that point rather than and just you're receiving. In it and you know you're receiving one and you're right. playing a good player or they're only very lucky. But you, you, you're going to have a chance to react and, you, you know, yeah, yeah, sometimes you get done. But it's not a, uh, what's even the point? I love to hear you talking about it's the gaming experience. You're yeah. trying to recreate the one that you want rather than just like, we need to make our models fit this game or we need to make our game sell our models or it, whatever. It's the whole thing for me. And it starts a long time before you play. It starts mm -hmm. from the clipping off process. And when I did the first Dead Zone, you know, I took the rest stick away and I was on holiday and I just, that's my time to kind of get a bit of hobby because you're away from the business and you just want to, and I found a frustrating experience. I thought, right, we're not using that again. You know? <laughs> right, okay. You know, yeah. I, I had no chance to use it. We were pushing, and we did, we did a lot of... And you're trying to sell me that, right? But you're not prepared to be honest about it and prepared to be open about that sometimes these things and haven't worked and correct. you change it. We've tried a lot of things. Where we're now going to do now is we kind of know what works and we're getting pretty and you're doubling down on the things correct. that work. Correct, you know, and the plastic tooling that we're getting working with our guys at in Poland are just it's superb quality it's as good as anything that's out there and now mm -hmm. you go look that's important to us you know when we yeah. talk to any manufacturer the miniature is the most important thing uh, absolutely that's where we start with we'll have the rules we can bring that but if you think you can shortcut the tooling it's not going to work for us so we've got a couple of products here which i think are worth, worth talking about one is dead zone because I'm, I'm hoping to persuade you to let us take this box home with us well, we, might uh, which, we just had a play of this out there and, and my, my co-host Johnny, he does love a dead, he does love a rat man. Yeah. Um, so this is just skirmish game for your sci-fi setting. Yeah. Um, and as a starter set, what I, what I like about this is is it's pretty comprehensive. You've got proprietary scenery because this is played on a little grid. It's, it's a three D game. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's, it, it's squares by squares by squares, and what that gives you is height. Mm -hmm. it, you you can't argue about movement because you move one or two, which is one square or two squares or yep, three yep. squares. You go anywhere you want in the square. Mm. If you want to go up, you climb up. As long as a wall, you can climb, you go up. So you get your snipers high and shoot down, mm -hmm. looking for clear shots, looking for... And because we built the scenery with the game, with the map, with everything, everything works seamlessly. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of games been developed over the years where you can, here's your armies and then, you know, get a, get a Pringle can and convert it into a tower and that's yes, your blocking. Yes, like, we you built the that. scenery for the game. For the game and it's absolutely and integral. The, 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 literally the panels of the scenery are the same size as the squares, right? Everything is... is or half the size of whichever yeah, way exactly. Right, it's it. exactly half of the thing as lip, but it's if that's blocking, that's clear. It's back, very clear yep. to clear. It's designed to be an urban combat game. There's a line of sights, all works. Mm. You get benefits for getting clear shots, not impediments. You add dice to your roll, so your stats never change. So yep. really very slick, fun game. Loads of factions in it. Very easy to get going. Ten mm. models. It's it played very competitively. People love it. Light fun. People love it. And yeah. you can you can really and, and it's an hour and a half 
tops. Yeah. Again. And you're going you know, to roll some dice, you're going to have some fun, you will get some crazy moments, you've got your command dice which give you that, and now I'm going to shoot you again. It's fine. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I like that you had that both in this and in the, the epic that we just looked at, is you had these command dice which will give you additional action. And what that yeah. means, particularly because this you move by a tile, you might think this is a very procedural game, and it really isn't because of those alternating activations and those bonus actions coming from those command dice. Mm -hmm. They're going to spice that up that you can't know what your opponent well, can achieve and then next in that time. game you did the right i'm going to bring my flamethrower around and i'm torching that square yeah and he kind of factored that yeah that's going to hit and then you went and now i'm using my shoot again and i'm hitting <laughs> I'm going to one. shoot the other one right yeah. okay that's good and that's that no more way you... right so, you know, in all the movies and correct and yeah. what you don't have to then do is remember special rules you don't have to have all of that stuff buried into your uh, army list there's a random element even to the heroic moments. Yes. And of course, the time you want the extra shot is the time you get the extra attack. And the time you get the extra attack is when you want the, you know, great, because you don't always, the plan doesn't always survive contact with the enemy. Absolutely. But it's how you adapt to it. Yeah. And I'm, I found in just playing this game very briefly, and deadly serious, this is, this is a lot more like what I wanted the new iteration of Kill Team to be. Right, the okay, new iteration so. of Kill Team is a very complicated game. Okay. Yeah. That had a lot of granularity. I felt this had granularity. Each model was a bit different, yep. but it wasn't difficult to understand. Correct. What we do is teach you the core mechanics and yep. then add some granularity yep. on top, not yep. rules through them. I mean, there were data cards. The units yeah, were different, but, but it was clear the ways they were different. Yeah. Absolutely. And then the keywords, and you get into... So you can take that copy home with you. Oh, look at that. You see, I thought I'd ask him on camera. Yeah, then he I can't, can't duck out. Can I? I'm going to shake him down upside down. See what he's got in his pocket. So the other thing for anyone that doesn't, that, that does sort of doesn't follow, Manti, would you say Kings of War is probably your premium? Oh no, it is, it is the, at the moment it's the biggest name we have. It's a global. We're having 200 people sell out tournaments now. Right, and there's Played a all, all every weekend somewhere around the world is a Kings of War tournament on, which is just. Amazing, right? Beautiful. Right, and and it's, it also kind of is a good uh, indication of the of I think the Mantic journey is you started way back with sort of Kings of War, Lessio, wrote you a set of rules, a first edition. How long ago was that? Was that well, the very very first was almost thirteen years ago, and it was a free giveaway. Two six the, page, twelve page pamphlet that got up on the, the wall. Right, that came, the, the came as, and you did some generic dwarves and some generic yeah. skeletons, and it was all very like. Well, it was a stepping on point. Yeah, and you I, know. Uh, and people now, get dwarves and elves and undead. And now this is—I thought I just looked at the boxes on the shelf. This in the more recent years, you've been releasing two-player starter sets with an entirely new, fully plastic army in one of them. Yeah. Um, and you're moving much away from that generic fantasy to moving into your own story. So this has got dwarves in it. Yeah. But I don't know whether they're in. Is that this so one? This, this yeah. is actually Northern Alliance. So this has got the. Tell me. Tell us about these dwarves. Yeah. So this is this is your Northern Alliance, which is a bunch of hippies that have moved out. Right. It's elves that have left the elven society. Dwarves that don't like the Dwarven Society, humans mm. that don't like the Kings of Men or Basileia, and they've made it a, a, a configuration up, up north that protects mm. something. And it's exciting. a multiracial confederation, Correct. right? Correct, with giants and ice and all of that. And mm -hmm. I might have seen that in our movie somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, well, that's why I didn't want to do it at first. And actually, <laughs> they took it away and made it quite good fun. But um, right. and then, So we've taken that away, and these are the Twilight and these are the bad elves that live in the void. Yep. But as with all these things now, we're getting to the stage where we're developing the story out. So now you've got dwarfs with hand grenades flying ravens, because who doesn't want that? Yeah, yeah. And, and the idea that they're harnessing the beats to your story is the, Correct. Is the thing. But, and it's, you know, the, the dwarfs are dwarf cavalry started mind rounding brocks, which are kind of giant badgers. Mm. So suddenly dwarf can have cavalry yeah. and they are beast masters. So they've leaned into the beast masters. We started from the throw masters right. because what they do is they throw their dog into an enemy unit. <laughs> yeah, because um, that's so on the sprue, isn't it? Sprue, and there's yeah. a handle where they right. throw, where they throw the dog. The dog. I said, make him some rules. Just put him yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And then so we've taken that kind of theme, and the free dwarves are far more. So we've got a, the, the there's good, evil, and nature, and the kind of three sides of the triangle. Right. So the northern lions use ice. You know, the kind of water themed with beasts. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, they start out as elves, dwarves, and humans, mm -hmm. but their magic is going to lean into ice elementals. They're going to have bears, all of that kind of thing. So that's their identity. You know, the void here, this is where the, the, the void, which is a, a blinking in and out kind of you know, interdimension, has taken the dark, dark elves, they were evil elves, the elves that were, and twisted them. 
And the right. longer you stay in there, the more twisted you right. get. Because they've been hanging out in the twisted zone. Yeah. Well, they were there when, the, when, it, when it went off. Right. The Fidelity mirror cracked. They all got trapped. Then they could drift in and out. They're sending slaves in. They can work with an army of night stalkers, which are the proper twisted things from your dreams that manifest. Yes. They slave those in and bring them into their armies right. to use as, as chaff. And so you're talking with the archetypes, you know, elves, Dwarfs, humans, mm. but we're teasing them out. In but you're giving them a little stuff. bit of spin, right? Yeah, Just to make... not a million um, miles away, and then they believe one keeps. Oh, what's interesting about this box is this is an ambush, yeah. which I think one of the things about Kings of War is you mentioned there's a huge community for Kings of War out there, yeah. but it is a it is a rank and frank big lot of figures game. Yeah. It is a two hundred figure game for many armies, yeah. uh, plus some giants and some cannons and all of those kind of things. But a couple of things that you've done that kind of offset that. One is you've got this new onboarding set, and you do these as single boxes, just yeah. get you sort of 40 or 50 goblins to get you started in your particular faction, and a way to play yeah. at that level. Yeah. Now, that's not going to keep you happy forever, but it is going to get you through the basics from which to Do build, you like right? this army? Do you like the mechanics? How do I play the mechanics? Um, yeah. We've done a lot of scenarios that work under a 1,000 points. Right. So when you buy the, you know, Northern Lion set, you've got the Berserkers, uh, Troopers, you've got the, the, you've got the Ravens. Uh, with these, you've got some big guys and some, some rank and flank troops. You know, the Goblins, I think you've got a, load of, a couple of hordes of Goblins and some Mincers, which are kind of chariots with huge big boom yep. wheels on the front yep. that scrunch you up. So you're going to start feeling it. It's the units that you're going to need lots of in your army anyway. Mm. So you know, get them done and out of the way first, and then when you get the army set, you're going to start adding the cannons and the fun stuff. Um, but the specific scenarios, just to lower that barrier from before I can play Kings of War, I've got a year of modelling ahead of me. Yes. Actually, yeah. now I can be playing in two weeks' time. Yes. And because you glue the models to the base, suddenly you're not playing with 200 models, you're playing with 10 bases. So one of the things that started to happen quite early with Kings of War is because there's no figure removal, yeah. bases have a kind of stamina value or whatever, people started to realise they didn't have to have exactly the same number of models on the, bottle, on, yeah. on the base, yeah. and people started to do mini dioramas and things. And over time, you've really kind of lent into encouraging that, yeah. saying, look, if you can't get these four models to fit on that base, don't worry about it. About it, it's the footprint. Well, interestingly, you know, these are kind of a stat level. Of people. Well, there's three. Well, is there four models on there or two? Right, yeah. There's two big giant birds and two riders. So, yeah. you know, what is so what we've started doing is that base, that unit has this much nerve. Yeah. And when it's had enough, it's all dead or it runs away. It's yeah. removed from play, which means if they survive their nerve test, they fight at full strength for one more turn. And yeah. that's a big tactical advantage. And if you slam into someone's flank, you do double damage, rear, triple damage. So it really makes that positioning and that movement. Yes, and the thing it's is, much more about the kind of position of the tiles in a lot of ways, isn't it? But you're freed up to really thematically build your army around that yeah. basis. And we always used to say today, faces and bases. Well, now it's not these mm. bases, it's these bases. And yeah. Some of the I armies we I saw a beautiful like, one of a guy who's got like a zombie horde running yeah. and they're being funneled through, yeah, a, through, through some gate, fences through, yeah, yeah, the fence and a gate. Gone. Yeah, and it's like they're bursting yeah. out. It's like, yeah, there is some space on that base where there could be more zombies, but this looks beautiful. Well, and he, I, been... think he's, I think he's not even done minimum unit count. I think he's done full unit count on that. So right, there is already 40 in. zombies in. Yeah. But they've done it in a thematic way. And, that's all the, and the only reason we have a minimum unit count is when you're playing, if your mate goes, is that a regiment or a troop? Or a horde. Yeah, yeah. They need to instantly go. Yeah. Ours is a visual hobby. Are they yeah. spearmen? Are they goblin spearmen? Yeah, because they've got spears. Yeah. Goblin archers? Yeah, because they've got yeah. those. And that's so it's where we, they're not like an elite unit. Should we have want a people thing. to play, you know, I think I say, you know, it's game agnostic. It's kind of, I'd rather you play Mancy with Kings of War because actually miniatures help keep the lights on. Yeah. But if it's a choice between you playing Kings of War or not, I'd rather you play with whatever you're going to play with because I'd yeah. rather you play the game. Yeah. So our, our, our thing is, if you play the game, you're welcome. If you play the game with our miniatures, we'll give you gifts, we'll give you rum, we'll give you prizes. And don't ever come up against the Ronnie the Bardstead because he's pretty tough. Right. Because the other thing about Kings of War that you referenced earlier, which was an interesting point, is the size and the impact of the community. I mean, this was presumably never really designed as a competition game, but it has a huge following, not only in terms of the number of events that run, but how much you interact with a kind of rules 
committee. Yeah, no, we have rules right? committees, and that's because when a designer designs a game, they think it's going to be played one way. Mm. And the rules committee is usually the, the the best hardcore players that understand that the first thing that a player looks to do with an army list is leverage is, it. Correct, leverage the shit out of it, Min yeah, max yeah. it the, the yeah, most yeah, filthy yeah. way. And I know it's time for a new edition when I go to a big tournament and someone's got five dragons and twelve chariots, and right. I'm like, Matt, new edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what happens is each time you tweak something, let's say yeah. this year we put Twilight Kin in it. And there mm. might be a new keyword that we've introduced to our like kin. And then you look at another unit and go, oh, they should have that. You know, that, that would work well with those right. ogre unit and that's yeah. this. And so the following year, it gets applied to a few more. And each year, new things just keep twisting. And then someone goes, right, now, <laughs> now I can take this with this. I can do that with it. I can have that magic one. Boom, boom, boom. Unkillable. There we go. So, yeah, right, oh, that was reset. never the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reset. So the Rules Committee brings it back into balance each year. And that's the only book we actually Because there's a lot at. of pairs of eyes on Correct. the problem, And presumably. they see which is overperforming. Yep. They see which is underperforming, mm -hmm. and they just bring it back in. So over there, you're Joe. What, who's, what, 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 who, what's been nerfed in my army? Mm. We go, well, you know what's been nerfed, because you've got six units of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's been what nerfed. got nerfed was what yeah. you expected to Correct, get Correct, exactly. And sometimes we have a career, sometimes you do. But what it means is then, the next year, you're not seeing the same armies fought in the same way with the same things, because we pulled this back, we pushed that forward. Yeah. But it's not codex at a time. It's everything gets done at the same time. Right. So one book... One update, start your new year, start your, you know, pick when you start and info, have it, you know, with the US, but we try and put it out in November, so the Emerald starts 1st of January, sometimes they have the last events in the old one, and then boom, we're off and running, right. we've got the new stats in. And you have a digital app, digital which keeps app. things up to the top. It, and, it, and it works, <laughs> unlike some people's okay. apps. I don't know about that, but it, um, it's free for two armies for every system. So if you're a casual player, you're picking up Kings of War, mm -hmm. I'm going to try it with this way. I've built bought an army, and I'm yeah. doing that. You just build it, tweak it, save it. You can save two armies. So the paid subscription is more about data. Is so that having access to You've got your rule lists. books, you can rapid search, it's got every single game. And the PDF system. of the rules is all on there. Not even a PDF, that's what I originally thought it was going to be, but I'm a technological idiot. It's actually searchable. a live searchable book that's right. all live. You so I can, I can look up a word in, and yeah. it'll search the documents and say, this is the paragraphs that it's in. Correct, it's actually right. a, okay. a, a database. Yeah. And it's every system. So let's say you've been thinking about going into Armada. Mm -hmm. You're playing Kings of War all the time, I'm thinking about getting into Armada or Dead Zone or whatever else. You've got the rules. Yeah. You can sit and have I've a read. Them, you can, yeah, okay, you know what? I'm going to pick up a few units for Armada. I'm going to play it. I'm going to be by the soldiers. So the for a subscription, you get all the rules to all of what we do, as many army lists as you want for everything. You know, it's just trying to build that community up and hopefully by having access to the dead zone rules, Pum's looking at it and going, well, I'll try Warpath. I'll, I'll try that and away we go. So, you know, it's a little, there's a tiered, but it's a bit, it's pretty reasonable for access to everything we do, all that we do, uh, mm. you know, and it's much easier than carrying a big rule book around to tournaments. So you read the rule book, lots of people buy the Clash of Kings book, they have a good read of it, mm. there's new art, there's new pictures, but then all they need to take for their tournament is... On the day. Your iPad, your phone. Yeah, because it is a big rule book, yeah. the, the, the Kings of All rule book. There's 28 right. army lists in it. Ronnie, I'm really grateful for all your time. Are you able to say anything for the beautiful people at home about some things that they might be able to see that we've not? We've talked about the big new release, the, kick, yeah. the Kickstarter. Well, it's I, exactly. I know that there's 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 I, other things you mentioned in the car on the way here. Yeah, uh, there's some some uh, sort of franchise work. That there you're is. So at. I mean, Walking Dead just come back. We re-signed that. That was a very popular license for us. And then when the license all changed. It, it expired and we've been able to get that back. So Walking Dead is going to be back available. Very, very popular system with, it's, it's player versus player with zombies. Yep. Um, like it more of a cop. Oh, it's a versus, not a co-op game. Then. So me versus you. Right, but we're, we're both people. Yeah, we're both, yeah, humans. Mm -hmm. And then every time I do something and make a noise, the zombie comes over and tries to bite my face off. Right. But of course, if I run behind you and whistle. Yeah. The zombie's going to meet you before he meets You're me. He's a bad guy, Ron. It's oh, so, so mean. <laughs> all right. Um, so that's that. And, and, and all then, of the things that were available before for that are going to be released available yeah, again. We've done it in kind of by waves. So it's, it's kind of it's a it's, it's a vet product at this point. It's not a, yeah. a retail product. But, but if somebody missed something last time, if you miss something, you're going to get singles. You can literally fill, it, fill in your collection. And if you want to get started, we've got a nice collector's edition that has all the mm. terrain, all the rules, three waves of stuff in it, and 30, 40 minis. Right. You know, all the 3D terrain upgraded. So right. a beautiful set. 
And then online, you can buy look this whole wave, which is the Atlanta story arc or the Green Farm right. story arc. Yep. So we've done that, uh, but most excitingly, and tune back in in early March. Mm, we early just, March isn't that far away. No, it's not, is it? Uh, we've got the Halo license. There you go, Halo. They've said, yeah, because there's a Master Chief helmet in the front there. There it is, and we've announced them as teasing, and away we go. So uh, big, big, we've got some sneak peeks early March, and then everything's going live and crazy at the end of March, and it's going to be coming right. out in September. But what it is, you're not able to say, I mean, are we talking board game, miniatures game, skirmish game? It's going to be one of them. Yeah, and <laughs> you're going to love it, and you might have got a little hint already today. Uh, I'll let you work that out. But okay. at this point, we want to announce everything as we announce it, because we know it's interpreted. It's super yeah. exciting. It's it's what the team have done is just wonderful. The minis are fantastic. It's going to be yeah. exciting. So tune in. You will see it. You're going to love playing it. And then we've got the license. We'd love to develop it over the years and months I mean, and years it's ahead. A, it's, it's a big license. I think a lot of people are going to be interested. And a whole bunch of new plastics for Kings of War during the course of the year, presumably new Trident factions. Realms, Abyssal coming out. We've got new factions for Dead Zone. We've got hard plastic coming for Warpath. We've got uh, for Firefight. We've got obviously Warpath coming, which is mm. live. So go back in now. Uh, we'll certainly go have a look and have a yeah, go and have a look and see if you like what it's offering. And if you're uh, if you're a uh, person of a certain age, hobbyist of a certain age, uh, it should tickle some of your um, some of your urges. Uh, and then we've got you know some more fun stuff like our board games, yeah. Dungeon I mean, Saga, which is designed for dads to play with their kids, mums right. to play with their kids. It's a parent game. It's a time family game. You've got that DM thing going on. DM, but you can. We've got an app being built that means you can actually do it cooperatively. All right. And okay. the barbarian is there. The elf ranger, she's fantastic, firing arrows off. So right. it's 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 that kind of hero quest for the new generation, uh, a right. real getting started board game kind of crossover. Um, Great price point, like 60 quid for all your models, all the undead, and then 10, 10 stories in each uh, pack. So some of the stuff that now I'm getting to a certain age, I used to be a young man in the hobby, and now I realise I'm one of the old men in the hobby. And you made the games that, you wanted to play, right? So there's a time that I wanted to play game, these games with my kids. Yeah. You know, and I wanted to like set it up, and I realised that the old dungeon was great, but there's so much setting up all the little fiddly bits to get right. tactical moments. Now it's two cards go down, put the doors on, what's behind the door? Let's get going. Right. Let's start knocking the monsters yeah. over. And, and you, they you, were rolling the dice and having that heroic moment, yeah. and having gone through... It with my kids having been a first generation game and looking at the second generation in order to have it for fun for both parties. Mm. It, it took a long time, took a fair few goes, but I think if you go and look at Dungeon Saga Origins right now, and Dungeon Saga, uh, it's uh, 60 quid, hours and hours of family fun, right. where you can share your hobby with your, with children. your children or with your nephews and, and they get to focus on the fun bits, rolling the dice, hitting the sixes or whatever that is. And it's not hundreds of figures it's not that thing you yeah. do up in your vatican basement in the yeah. privacy of your yeah, own. the kitchen table yeah it's yeah exactly that all right ronnie really appreciate all the time you've given us my pleasure right. buddy. Thank i hope you it's been useful up. thank you for watching bye-bye bye -bye. Bye. don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content like the video maybe leave us a comment thank you Thank you.